already. Let's see, we got YouTube working. Let's see if we can get Twitter to work. Is Twitter working? Looks like Twitter is live. And the last piece of the puzzle, let's see, Twitch. Twitch is also working. Perfect. Okay. How's it going, Diego? How's it going, Blomp? John? Morning, everyone. Let me switch over here. And let's get this stream announced. And that's official. All right, this is a uh, shofar horn, by the way. That might be the last time I use it. I feel like it's a terrible sound. Neighbors are going to complain. The didgeridoo was so much cooler. All right, how's it going, Ed? So today we're going to be uh, doing a coding stream. So this isn't going to be a paper stream. Uh, you know, I kind of stopped doing coding streams because the numbers just weren't there. <laughs> Not as many people watch them, but... You know, you gotta, I think coding is part of machine learning, so we gotta do it. So we're gonna be looking at Cursor, which is a basically an IDE, uh, Development Environment Cursor. This is the website. It's basically a startup, and uh, it's kind of like a VS Code mimic or like a VS Code extension. I don't know exactly how it works in the background. To be honest, when you click this download for Linux button, what actually happens is that it, you give you get this dot app image file and then you can basically run that dot app image and it opens up what appears to be a VS code but it's not exactly VS code right it sees here it's not actually VS code this is actual VS code here but I don't know exactly what it's doing I think it's running its own instance of VS code with the cursor stuff built in but you can see here it's complaining that we're not signed in. So, cool. Why would we use this? So this has uh, all the kind of ChatGPT functionality more integrated deeply into the environment. So the way that I use ChatGPT and Bard right now for development, I kind of use them like this. I have like a Chrome tab open with ChatGPT and then I'll talk to it, I'll copy specific things, and then I have to kind of go back and forth and copy paste and it's a little bit annoying, you know? So people, uh, the, the fine folks here at Cursor, uh, I don't know how many people are working at this company, but they kind of integrated that a little bit closer so it's not they don't have their own language model they don't have their own AI this is just using uh, OpenAI's API so it's literally just GPT-4 but they have kind of shortcuts that make things faster here so you got control command K edit and write code select some code click edit you have chat which is a command shift L so you can ask it about things but then it also has kind of more powerful tools such as uh, asking the AI about your entire code base. So uh, we're going to be working on the uh, robotic cat toy project. So this is kind of like a little demo project that I kind of dig up for these coding streams. But basically it consists of uh, some servos and a Raspberry Pi and you move the servos with uh, GPT kind of like an RT2 uh, from that Google paper where you're basically using the LLM directly to output servo commands. Um, but mostly it's just an exercise in trying out all the different features of this cursor product and seeing if it's any good. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and try this code base answer. So it sounds like you can use type command plus enter the chat and then click with the code base. Okay, so let's try that. Command enter, control enter. I guess that did nothing. Control enter. Do I have to open up a chat manually? Is that what I do? Give feedback. Toggle AI panel. Okay, there we go. Uh, new chat. Help me understand this repo. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see better. I guess I can't. Can I zoom in? Jesus. 
There we go. Help me understand this repo. Help me understand this repo. Give it GPT-4 and uh, do with the code base. All right, so that was pretty quick. Uh, I don't know if it fed the entire repo into there, but it seems like it kind of just did. So let's see. Appears to be for a project named Play, which is a robotic AI cat toy. That's all correct. Seems to be controlled by a Python script, Grad.io Wiggle. That is one of them. There are multiple different Python scripts you can use as kind of a launch or an entry point here. And that's part of what makes this repo a little bit confusing right now is the there's a bunch of different scripts that are all kind of not necessarily related, right? So it's not a super uh, clean repo. It's, it's definitely like kind of a, a working kind of messy table with papers everywhere. Got a requirement file, ImageNet labels, make file, license, readme. Uh, may I ask what's the cursor IDE? Question from Manu. The cursor IDE is a product uh, from a startup that is basically just a VS code uh, that has GPT-4 kind of built into it a little bit more deeply. And you can do things like debugging, linting, docs. We're going to try all these features today, so. Uh, okay. Uh, are there any redundant files in this repo? Let's see. It's not possible to definitively say. Okay, so it's, it's not great. Uh, let's see. What would be a better directory structure for this project? It looks, it feels busy and confusing right now. Good directory structure can indeed make a project easier. Here's a suggested structure. Okay, so it wants us to kind of bury things inside the source. So this is, you see this sometimes, this SRC folder. Got a labels, tests, docs. Okay, put the git ignore outside, the readme, the requirements in the outside, make file in the outside. Okay. Can you move, can you move files around? Let's see if it can actually do that. I don't have the ability to directly manipulate files in a file system. However, I can provide instructions on how to move them around. Okay, so it doesn't actually, that's interesting. It can't, it can edit the code, but it can't move these files around. So even though it can suggest a specific directory structure, it can't actually really do much other than that. I want to keep some of the older scripts around, but I don't, even if I don't need them, where should I put them? Let's see. You can create a directory named archive or old underscore scripts. Both of those names suck. <laughs> Obviously, OLD is the best name for a uh, directory where you put old shit in. Okay, so it can't actually do that. So let's go ahead and just do this manually. So we're going to go into this folder here. Uh, we're running uh, Ubuntu Linux here. I know Ubuntu Linux is sometimes made fun of by other Linux distros, but I will fight people. I've been using Ubuntu since I was a child, and it's my favorite distro, and, you know, I have an emotional connection to it, so... <laughs> uh, Diego Camal, combining cursor with open interpreter... Uh, open interpreter, I think you're referring to this here. So open interpreter is you can go to GPT and here you go. Advanced. Oh no, you're talking about open interpreter. The, yeah, I saw this. Someone mentioned this on the, uh, 
on the Discord channel, but basically it runs code on your actual computer so it can do stuff like the stuff that I'm about to do, right? Moving files around. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't necessarily trust that this isn't doing some sketchy shit. Granted, like, everything could be doing sketchy shit. Like, this cursor could also be doing sketchy stuff, but... I don't know. Maybe we install this. Run shell commands. Do I trust this? All right, let's fucking do this. Pip install open interpreter. We're going to do it, guys. We're going to go live. After installation, simply run interpreter. Interpreter. Welcome to open interpreter. Open AI API key. Ugh. We're going to have to make a new API key for this. Fuck. <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't want to copy my API keys. Fuck that. Okay. So why don't we make a directory called SRC. And let's also make a directory called old. And then let's uh, move some of these files in here. So I don't think we need this bulk read and write into old. I don't think we need GPT control grad IO. Move that in there. I don't think we need image net labels. Put that in old. Oh, nope. Oh, see, we already fucked up. Okay, no, we didn't. We're good. Let's also move model.py. So the way that this uh, cat toy used to work is I was using uh, a mobile net, and I was using a mobile net that's trained on ImageNet, and then any time it finds a cat, it'll basically just automatically move the servos. But... We're going to be doing it differently, so what else? Probably this head motions, moving into old. Uh, what are we left with here? So let's keep going. we got the servo, camera, GPT. Um, we could probably move this run browser rpy. Why don't we make a directory called uh, scripts? And then move all of our .sh scripts into that. Then, I don't think we need wiggle. Move grad.io, or just wiggle, I guess. Wiggle.py into old. And I think we're, that's basically it. We just have all the basic stuff here. We have camera.py, gpt.py, and servo.py. And then grad.io servo. Okay, I think we can move the rest of these. So now we can just say move star dot pi into uh, SRC. Oh no, no. All right, we're gonna have to do this. We're gonna have to go into scripts. We accidentally moved these Python files in here. Let's move uh, star dot pi into uh, SRC. Okay, so now we got that in there. Go into SRC. We got our four things. Uh, we probably don't need that grad.io server. Let's just remove that. Actually, rather than even removing it, let's just uh, move grad.io server to old. Okay. Uh, we probably don't need the grad.io wiggle to be, you see how it's green? That tells you that, uh, so here. If you look at files, right, they have different uh, read, write, so R stands for read, W stands for write, and then X stands for uh, execute. So that's why it's green, is because it has the ability to run, right? So we don't necessarily need that. So you can do something like this. <laughs> Actually, I think what we want is 666, right? Yeah, that's what we want. All right. 666 is read, write, read, write, read, write. Uh, okay. Uh, and now we're looking good. Now we have all of our kind of stuff at the root level here. We have our scripts. I think this is good. So let's go ahead and uh, 
close this and we're going to control shift G and that'll open up basically the GitHub uh, commit thing. If you're old school, you can do it like this. You can say git add dot and then git status. You can see it's added all this stuff and then you do git commit dash M uh, restructure based on cursor. Let me do a git push. Oh, you see? Not logged into that, so why don't we do, do it from here? Control Shift G, Control Shift E, Control Shift G, add all of these, cancel sync changes. Okay. So, I'm also SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi. So, this is the Raspberry Pi that's on my desk. You guys just can't really see it, but it's there. And we're going to git pull here. So, now our Raspberry Pi has the uh, latest stuff. All right. So let's go back to our control shift E to open up the side panel. We can now see that we have the directory structure as recommended by our little cursor buddy here. Okay, so now let's actually start maybe asking it to refactor some of our stuff here. So we got GPT. This is kind of some boilerplate that we've worked on many times before. It's kind of just wraps these uh, the OpenAI API here. But why don't we ask it to explain this file here? And actually, I'm curious, now that we've restructured our code base, I wonder if this uh, with code base still works. So let's say, can you explain what src-gpt.py is doing and then let's do control enter and it'll add all of the code base as a context I'm sorry but I can't provide an explanation as it was not included in the code snippet okay so you see this is this is an issue that we found right here where I don't think it's updated that I think we probably have to do this we probably have to hit new chat and then do it Still can't find it. Huh. Oh, shit, look at that. You see it's not... It only has the make file, the readme. Huh. So I guess you have to give it that specific... It only works one folder deep? That's fucking terrible. Can you inspect files that are further than just one folder? Okay. Well, then explain to me. Can you explain what gpt.py is doing? Ah, okay, here we go. Uh, appears to be a script that interacts with the GPT 3.5 to generate text and trajectories, set open AI key, GPT text. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can try one of these other things here. So auto debug or command K edit the code with AI. So if I highlight this set open AI key and I hit control K, editing instructions, add documentation. Oh, nice, it added a little doc string, look at that. <laughs> now it's adding a little, you can see the greens Set the OpenAI key, try to read the key from a file. All right, that's nice. Nice little documentation there, good to stuff. Let's see. Uh, add key equals none. Let's see, GPT text, default temperature, max tokens. I wonder if we could do something more complicated here. What if we what if we highlight this here and then we ask it to basically uh, 
I don't know. I'm trying to think of something interesting to do here. I don't think we need this multi-run test case anymore. Let's see. Let's see if we can ask it to put this in a separate test case. So let's do Control K. And then we're saying, can you put this in a separate test uh, module? Right, can it take a function that's right now here and then put it in a separate file that's the, the test file? Okay, that's not at all what I want. It's just trying to edit it in place. So let's do control backspace to cancel. Uh, reject. Okay, let's see. Can you uh, move the GPT test function into a separate test module? Okay, so it suggested it, but it didn't actually go ahead and create that. It's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, cancel generation. And one thing that I noticed here is if you actually go to your uh, settings here in cursor. So I, I paid for the $20 subscription. It's like $20 a month, which is a little bit excessive because it's literally just GPT. So if you were... Uh, paying for GPT already and then paying for this, you're kind of paying extra for no reason. And so far we've used 13 requests out of, I guess, 500. So they have a limit on the number of GPT-4 requests, which is not very great. You know, I don't, I'm not, I feel like they shouldn't be doing that. And you also can't use your own OpenAI key. I don't know. I guess the way that they do it is they, you pay them and then they pay OpenAI per request because if you could just use your own API key, there wouldn't be a way for them to monetize. So right now they're monetizing it by kind of doing the API, OpenAI API for you. But yeah, IDK. I think, yeah, no free will. This doesn't look great. I kind of agree with you. It's kind of, it feels clunky, but I feel like it's also the type of coding that you're doing, right? So like, this type of coding where I'm messing around with the entire code base, right? I'm like changing literally the layout. I'm like asking it to add new files and stuff like that. Like that's not necessarily what a lot of people who code do, right? If you're working in a larger company and as a software engineer, a lot of times the code base is huge and you're basically just going to a single little function like this and maybe adding a little thing here or changing something like that, you know? So in that case, something like this would be more useful, right? Like cursor, because you would basically be able to say, okay, what is this uh, this stuff here, this uh, trajectory, what does that mean? Like, is there anywhere else in the code base where that is? So I think as the size of the code base increases and this type of uh, entire code base chat with the code base or whatever, which is what they keep advertising here, becomes more useful. Let's see what else. At symbols let you easily show code. Try typing at into the command K to get a dropdown of all the files and code symbols in your folder. You can use this for generating code that has a particular dependency. Use the same styles as at error popup for asking about a file. Okay, so why don't we do this? Let's do a new chat. Uh, we don't really want, let's get rid of this. Uh, I don't want this exit out. I'm gonna get rid of this crap here. I no longer want this crap. Trajectory, give me min max trajectory. Multi run. This was just a bunch of crap we did on a previous. Uh, let's get rid of that. Let's go control shift G. Let's add some modifications. Commit sync. And let's, so one thing that I like about uh, this is the logging. So you see how here we have log warning, log debug, all the like uh, output is there. So why don't we do this? Let's go into camera.py. This also has the logging. What about servo? Also has the logging. 
So you see how here in the servo we're using the play logger, which is going to be the same one, but here this is going to be a different logger object. So let's see if we can do this. Let's say control A, control K, and then we're going to say add, uh, modify the logging such that it uses the play logger uh, much like is done in the in the at servo.py. Let's see if we can do that. Submit edit. All right, so what it should do is it should change this to the play logger. Okay, it's keeping everything the same, keeping everything the same. There you go, boom. Oh, nice, look at that. Ah, that's what we wanted. Okay, so I mean, that was a pretty easy one, but uh, after 500 states, that you still have unlimited slow GPT responses. It also supports training using your own OpenAI key. Uh, okay, so Blompoke coming in with uh, some knowledge here. Apparently you can use your own API key. Okay, so now it's kind of going through the entire... Right, it, it kind of hasn't realized that it doesn't need to do this. But, okay. One line change, which is kind of what we wanted anyway, so I'm okay with that. All right, nice. Accept. All right, I have a list of things here. So for this stream, I made a list of different things we can do. Uh, obviously, we're going to want to try out all the features, but I'm going to be referencing this. This is just normal VS code, by the way, over here. Uh, simplify the OpenAI API. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. Uh, can I come here and say add logging to this? Control K. Add logging to this. This is really slow. I'd like, it's kind of like triggering me how slow this is. I feel like I could just type faster than this. Okay, it added two debug logs. I'm okay with that. Uh, and let's see if let's let's make a purposeful mistake here. So we're gonna add uh, responses. So we added an S to the end of this, so this variable doesn't even exist anymore. And we're gonna try to run this. Uh, no module name pytest. Let's get rid of this pytest. Or actually, let's see if it'll do that for us. So it said here, one of the things that they talk about is auto debug. So you can, how do we auto debug? It's an agent for fixing errors. Click the blue auto debug button that shows up after a terminal error. Uh, okay, where's the blue auto debug button? Auto debug. So it should figure out that it doesn't need this module here and it should delete it. Okay, search results show, but you see how it's kind of doing this chain of thought stuff here? It's like creating its own thought, and then it's going ahead and then determining what it needs to do, and then it wants me to pip install pytest, uh, delete the import in the file. Sure, I can remove the import. Here's how your code will look after removing it. Oh, I really like that it did this, the hashtag rest of your code. That would have been really annoying if it had to go through the entire file again just, just to delete that one import at the beginning. Uh, this should resolve. Uh, okay. Do it. Can it actually do it? Sure. Here's your code. Okay, so it can't actually do it. That's annoying. So even though it, can, it found the bug, but let's see if it finds a more difficult bug. So here's, I think this is another easy bug, right? Because it's just, actually let's do that. And this is actually maybe something that's annoying here. So you see how I put an S here and there is no variable called responses, but it doesn't show me that. It doesn't like automatically tell me, hey, there's an error here. Versus if I'm in VS Code, let's uh, open up uh, go to play, open up VS Code, just normal vanilla VS Code here. 
it's not vanilla I have a uh, copilot you can see copilot is activated down here but if I were to go into this file here you see how it's it's red so it's giving me that red highlight which is telling me hey there's an error here right versus here in uh, cursor I don't have that that would be that would be nice if I <laughs> if it could just do that for me okay but let's go ahead let's keep running uh, GPT trajectory let's do this set open AI key and then do GPT trajectory I think we need something here whatever let's just run it and see if the auto debug can figure out no module open AI I think you're using the wrong conda activate play cannot find conda environment play uh, can you install I don't think we're going to be able to get it to create a conda environment with this requirements.txt here, unfortunately. Hmm. Let's just pip install OpenAI into the base environment. Let's hit run. No module OpenAI. Pip install OpenAI. Come on, I just literally installed it. Oh, you see that? That's the problem is because it's not updating. Sometimes this happens with IDEs. You have to basically restart them. Uh, let's go back down to our dev folder and run this cursor app image. And now let's hit play. It keeps asking me to submit. Oh my god, it's still still nothing. Come on. Python import open AI. What? Rut row, is this using the wrong Can I change which Python? Settings? Uh, you see it's not it's using the bin Python 3 that's the problem this is what it needs it needs to use this one right because if I do which Python that's not the same one you see god this is kinda busy so sorry guys but here you can see that the whenever you hit this play button up here it's using dash bin Python 3 but the Python that I want it to use is the anaconda or conda Python which is the one here right so normally you can change it so in VS code for example down here you can change which Python it's using so let's see if we can do that here as well so I want it to use not bin Python I want it to use the base Python which is this one alright now it should work Missing one required positional argument, trajectory description. Okay, so that's correct. That's now a good error. Let's hit control B so we get rid of that side window just because whenever the text is big like this, it's hard to see. So it needs this, right? So you see this is uh, keyword arguments look like this. They have a default, but uh, arguments without a default, right? Like this, which are just called args, you need to provide them. And whenever we're actually calling the function here, we're not actually putting in the uh, trajectory description, which should be a string. So let's go ahead and see if the auto debugger will catch this. This is a little bit more complicated than the previous error, but let's see. Uh, auto debug. Uh, error message indicates this function is missing a required positional argument. Okay, going to the definition. Okay, is it is it done? It's reading, I guess, the entire file. Hello? Were you able to find bug? Uh, okay, there you go. I think that works. Run in terminal. Copy. Let's do that. Uh, we only have two servos. Oh, num keyframes.
All right, now let's run. Open AI, API key not found. That's no good. Should find that. Keys dir open AI dot txt root directory dot keys. Uh, you see, this is the problem. Is that the root directory is now no longer this. Ugh. It's now one over that. So why don't we actually just hard code that. Let's do dash home. Let's go. This is the root directory, not here. Root directory is going to be PWD. That'll give you the full directory. So let's do that. Don't use relative paths in your code. Okay, there we go. Now it should work. Let's hit play. All right, it worked. <laughs> it didn't really output anything. I guess we should probably have uh, the output of GPT trajectory printed out. So why don't we highlight this and then do control K, uh, print out the output of GPT trajectory. It just seems like a little slow, right? Because it's like, think about if I was just doing this here, right? In VS Code, like, let's say I come down here, right? And I want to do the same thing. I can just come right here and I can say, print out the trajectory, I tab autocomplete. Out equals. I guess this is a little bit more clunky too. Like the, the tab autocomplete of Copilot, like you have to kind of like, yeah, you have to kind of almost like see where it goes and then set it up for the alley-oop, right? It's like the, the way that Copilot does, it's like you can't, you have to kind of set it up for the Ali oop right? Versus here, you can kind of a little bit, I guess, ask it directly and it'll output. But I don't know, both of those seem a little chunky to me. Okay, so now we have a min, max, min with two keyframes and that's perfect. That's kind of what we wanted. Nice, okay. Uh, what about three keyframes? Nice. Okay, so if you guys remember, so uh, trajectories were basically uh, robot joint commands that we're sending. This is the actual prompt that we're using for that. So you can see here the way we were creating these prompts is uh, by using this uh, system prompt here, given a description of trajectory, user, assistant, user, assistant, user, blah, blah, blah. So we give it this little kind of like supervised learning data set here, right? And then that allows it to create a example that is similar to that. Uh, Blom Poke question. One massive problem with Copilot X is that it often detects the question false as not related to programming and refuses to answer anything after that. I don't think, I can't even ask a question to Copilot. I think there's a way to chat with it inside of here. I think like you can do, I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but the way that I use Copilot is I like, I, I use it in the tab autocomplete format, right? So don't save, I don't know. You don't have the chat, so cursor does have the chat. Uh, all right, so now let's ask it to do something that's definitely way more complicated. We're gonna come here and we're gonna highlight this entire thing. Or actually, even better, let's do this. We're gonna Command Shift J, I think it was. No, Command Shift L. We're gonna new, do a new chat, which is, I guess, Control L. And we're gonna say, I want to create a trajectory object. 
using an OO pattern. Object oriented pattern. Uh, look at at GPT dot pi uh, to see what properties should exist for this object. Can you create this object for me? Let's see. So right now uh, we have this function GPT trajectory which will give us a trajectory which looks like this. It's just a string. Right, or actually it's not a string, it's a list of tuples. But let's see if uh, cursor here can kind of give us a good generic class for this. Okay, so we have a description, number of keyframes. Uh, the model probably doesn't need to be there, but okay, sure, number of servos, keyframe delimiter, servo delimiter, min value, max value. Okay, this is kind of maybe not super useful. Can you add a string function and a from string and a from string as well? So let's see if we can add functions to this that will turn it into a string and then from a string create a trajectory object. I don't like how it copies the entire thing again. It's like really annoying. Ooh, this is no good. You see here, because this string function, it's creating this uh, object here, or this string here, and this string just has all the different properties in it like this. But this is not actually what I wanted. What I wanted is a string that looks more like the string that we're feeding to OpenAI, right? Something that looks like this. Right, this here. Can I add to chat? Control Shift L. I want the uh, string function to uh, create a string that looks more like what I am feeding into chat GPT. Uh, can I give it a specific line number? Can I do like this? Control Shift K, Control Shift L. Uh, see the line I referenced. Sure, based on your request, the string method can be modified to generate a string that resembles the input to the ChatGPT model. Here's how you can do it. Okay, self keyframe delimiter, join self servo delimiter, join map string keyname, keyframe for keyframe in self dot trajectory. Trajectory self dot trajectory description with, this is still not, this is incorrect. It really what we would want is just to return this trajectory string. Okay. <laughs> still no good. <laughs> it's, it's clunky, you know, but I feel like at this point I could have probably written it uh, faster myself. Okay, so we've used the at symbols. We've looked at the code base wide. Uh, let's see, docs. This feature improves the AI's understanding of third-party libraries. To use doc, type at library name in the chat or command K. To have cursor crawl custom documentation, type at add. Entry point. Next JS. So you can give it documentation. All right, let's see. Open AI API. Uh, API docs. Let's see. GPT best practices. Can I just give it this? Type at library name into the chat. Let's do a new chat. Am I using the GPT API correctly at OpenAI? Oh, look at that. So they do have some documentation already loaded. That's kind of interesting. So I feel like the OpenAI one is pretty obvious. Let's ask it uh, Control Shift E, and then we're going to look at servo. So once it's done doing this, we're going to look at the servo. 
because this is a uh, Dynamixel is the company that makes these servos and this library is going to be obviously a little bit more obscure so I'll see if it can handle uh, the servo library or it has documentation on that. Okay it seems like you're using the OpenAI GPT correctly, the GPT text you're correctly creating, the GPT trajectory you create a list of messages, however here are a few things might want to add more error handling to ensure the API calls are successful. Be careful with how you're handling the OpenAI keys. Uh, use GPT 3.5. Depending on your use case, you might want to consider using GPT 4. Be aware of the token limit. Okay. Fine tuning. I don't know about that. And then best practice. Okay. So it kind of gave me like a little bit of a nothing burger there. Let's see if we can. Uh, I don't want that. I want. Uh, exp am I using the at Dynamixel. Yeah, so it doesn't have the Dynamixel SDK, so how do I Can I go to docs? Can I add? Add new doc. Let's go to Dynamixel API. Dynamixel SDK API reference Python. Here we go. Let me go here. Put that there. Dynamixel SDK. Confirm. Am I using the Dynamixel SDK correctly? Okay, I think it's thinking because it's it's probably literally scraping this entire fucking thing, which is maybe not necessarily ideal. This isn't a ton of text, but it, like if I accidentally gave it something that was millions of tokens, it would have absolutely destroyed my uh, my computer there. Okay, let's see what it has to say. Yes, you are using the Dynamixel SDK correctly. Here's a breakdown. You're importing the necessary modules. You're initializing the port handler and packet handlers. You're correctly opening the port and setting the baud rate. You're using the right one byte methods. You're correctly handling the communication results and errors. Okay, so one thing that I know is wrong with this is that I create multiple uh, port handler and packet handler objects, which I don't want to do, right? Ideally, you'd have one port handler and one packet handler for all the servos, but the way that this class is created, it basically creates it for every single servo. So. Let's see if it can recognize that. If I create multiple servo objects, shouldn't should each of them have their own port handler and packet handler uh, objects? I think the there should just be one, I'm pretty sure. No, each servo object does not need to have its own port handler and packet handler. In fact, it's more efficient to share a single port handler and packet handler across all servo objects that are connected to the same port. This is because the port handler and packet handler are responsible for managing the communication. Okay, so it basically says you should use this, which is what I do here, but I'd ideally not want to do that. You're correctly sharing the port handler and packet handler across multiple servos. Okay. Can you design a new object called robot which uh, has a new class, which uh, has three servos, which all share the port handler and packet handler. Let's see. So there's a bunch of properties here that are also going to be the same. So for example, this device name property, that should be a property of the robot, not the servo. Uh, things such as this, the baud rate, the protocol version. Some of these properties should be properties of the robot class. So let's see if it can actually pull out some of those properties that matter. It did not. So you can see here basically the only 
thing it does here, it just creates a servo objects and then it shares the port handler. <laughs> it just puts it in a for loop like this. Okay, so this isn't ideal. Let's see. Uh, based on the at Dynamixel SDK, uh, what, how should I be bulk writing and reading to multiple servos? The current OO approach in this file seems heavy. See, this is like, I think another problem here is that where I want to, where I kind of am trying to push this repo or this in individual file here is far away from where it currently is, right? So like right now it's this uh, servo object and then you have to create multiple of these servo objects, but I kind of wanted to push it into a, a world where it's doing more of a bulk read and a bulk write, but here you go, group bulk read and group bulk write, but that's going to be a huge rewrite of this entire file. So it's, can it rewrite the entire fucking thing is basically what I'm asking. And here you go. Dynamic school XDK provides the, whoa, where is it? Group bulk write, group bulk read classes for efficiently writing to and reading from multiple servos. Here's a brief overview. Okay, so all it did is it kind of just copy pasted from this documentation here. Get the data, get the data, clear the parameter storage. Okay. Can you write a Python script for me that tests out this group bulk read and write? Use the uh, default parameters uh, in the at servo.py file for things such as the baud rate protocol version uh, adder torque or device name etc let's see Sure, here's a Python script that uses group bulk and group read classes to communicate with three servos. This script assumes that the servos have IDs one, two, and three. Okay, this is all seems correct for now, but we're gonna have to actually test this out. Enable torque. I don't like how it's doing this in with these for loops. I don't think it needs that for loop. Hello, Emily. Okay, it's still like I still don't like these for loops. I think the whole point of this group bulk read is you don't need to do that. Let me see. Get data, TRX, TX, clear params, group bulk write. Uh, group bulk write port, PH, port handler, packet handler, add param. So you add a bunch of params and then push. So what it's doing here? Okay, let's copy this and let's see if it actually works. So we're gonna copy this. We're going to make a uh, new file here. We're gonna call this uh, bulk write pi. Paste that in there. Obviously we're not gonna be able to test it out here. We're gonna have to go into our Raspberry Pi to test it out. So in order to do that, 
we're going to have to commit. So we're going to commit here and we're going to say test group write, commit, sync. We're going to go over to our Raspberry Pi. We're going to get pull. Oh. All right, and now we're going to go into our source. Here's the file that we want, right? There's that bulk write, and let's Python bulk write. Oh, and it moved. Nice. Okay. Ah, all right. That that did something. Uh, you guys didn't see it because here. Let me actually see. Ah, uh, no. I could move the camera so that you guys can see this a little bit better. But here, let me see if this even works. Ah, uh, you guys can't see it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys can't see the servos. You can't see the cool robot moving. All right. Whoa, what's going on here? Okay. Let's see if servo still works. Yeah. Okay. All right. That that seems to be fine. So the bulk write is working. So now what we really want is to basically turn this into this, right? So basically do what we did here, but with bulk read and bulk write. Okay. So let's open up a new chat or I guess X. Let's do control shift L. We're going to do a new chat. Uh, let's see if we can do anything. Fix lints. Auto debug. What about this? What about fixing lints? Helps you quickly fix lint error. Hover over any lint error and click the fix button that shows up. Do we have any lint errors on here? What if I do this? Control K. Control A, Control K, fix lint. I don't, it shouldn't have any lint errors, but I don't know. Maybe it decides that some of the stuff could be cleaner looking. Oh, look at that! It made uh, it changed it. So this is actually this is actually nice. I like this. So rather than importing star, this is generally a bad practice whenever you import star like that because then it's harder to know what you're actually using from that library. Generally, the better uh, thing to do is to explicitly uh, import like that. Here, it's also changing. Whenever you have variables like this that are kind of at the global scope, right? You want to put them in all caps like that. Uh, here you can see it's using the globally scoped. That seems fine. I kind of like that. Okay. I don't like this. So you see uh, group bulk read. It changed it to group underscore bulk underscore read. But this is actually incorrect here. Right? Group bulk write. Because the reason... So... Normally in Python, whenever you name variables, you're naming them like this, port underscore handler. But Dynamixel is a C library, so they use kind of the C convention, which looks like this, port capital H handler. I think this is called camel case, snake case. I forget the exact names, but this is actually straight up incorrect here. Right, I feel like it should just use this, but... All right, we'll accept that. We'll accept it. Control click accept. Okay. Uh, can you refactor uh, at? Whoa, what? At bulk write uh, such that it. Uh, makes into into a single into a uh, class called robot that is similar to the class in at servo.py I want oh, I want functions such as move 
what other functions do we want to add here? Uh, move, enable torque, disable torque, uh, get position, such so as move and uh, get position. Let's see, this is kind of a, a bigger, bigger task for it here. Uh, let's close out of this here. Okay, so now it's going to try to take this script, which itself wrote, right, which is basically using the group bulk read and bulk write coming from the Dynamixel SDK uh, library here. And now you can see it's putting it into this robot class. So, so far so good, you know. It's created these properties, opening the port, setting the baud rate, uh, initialize group bulk and group write, moving, write goal position. Okay, nice. Get position. Nice. I don't like these prints, but we're gonna get to that. You can use it like this. All right, perfect. So let's copy this. And let's put that there. And let's just copy this and put it in the bottom. So we want to test this. So in order to test this, right, you can say the if name equals, this is where Copilot would be great. See, because look at this. So let me actually delete this. If I go to Copilot, right, let's say in Copilot, I had this class. As soon as I type if, you see Copilot, Copilot already auto completes. If, you see, it wants to auto-complete, so all I have to do is hit tab, and then I think if you give it a second, it'll create its own test case. So we're going to give it a second here. There you go. Initialize robot, set goal, move robot, close robot. So GitHub Copilot here gave me a much nicer test case than uh, Cursor. And they're both the same AI, right? It's just GPT-4, but... I like that. I like being able to tab complete rather than here where I have to basically come here. I have to copy this. I have to like move my mouse, click on this check button, come over here and then do, I don't know, maybe control K, add a test case when this Python file is run as a script. And this is actually incorrect. It's not even indented correctly here. Hmm. Reject. Okay. Can I control K? Can I delete this? Okay. Don't save. Let's save this one here and let's control P and reopen it. Okay, so let's commit this. I'm going to say bulk right. We're going to pull it into our Raspberry Pi. So there we go. Raspberry Pi now has the updated code. And now let's uh, try it out. And it worked. Nice. OK. Can we do something more complicated? So can we uh, come here? And right now, this is pretty easy. It's just going to this goal position 000. Can I do this and say, highlight all of this and say, control K. Uh, can you make it move to uh, several other positions, not just 000? zero, zero? Can I enable Copilot in Cursor? Yes, I can. 
uh ed btw uh realize your eye staring at camera is gone oh no i gotta turn that back on let's turn that back on let's come here add effect let's add the eye contact there we go now it's back you guys see it looks like little stoner eyes <laughs> all right uh, you can enable copilot in cursor so you can come here and enable it I need to sign into github though because but then cursor would have my github so actually why don't we why don't I do that retry can I sign in manage extension I don't know I don't want to do that I don't want to do that uh, submit edit let's see I probably should have submitted before I did things <laughs> copilot but shouldn't it just do these things yeah my so my opinion is that I feel like this right now cursor is cool right now but let's get real this is just cursor is just like some random startup you know this isn't really that complicated like you could probably write this product relatively quickly so I bet you there's people at Microsoft right now who are working on the better version of this, right? So it's difficult, right? Because if you're this company here, if you're Cursor, like what are you what are you going to do, right? You have your you, you you can get people to pay twenty dollars and they're going to use it for maybe three months, but then three months from now, I don't see how VS Code and Microsoft and OpenAI don't just create basically every single one of these features, make a better version of them. And then what, then what do you do? Then if you're cursor, you're kind of dead in the water. The only real kind of exit strategy that I could see for this startup like cursor is a kind of an acquisition situation where Microsoft realizes that like, hey, here's this company cursor. There's like five people working there and all of them pretty much know all there is to know about uh, IDEs and how to basically integrate the AI into the IDE. So why don't we just hire them, acquire their company, and then boom, now we get all those stuff but it really depends on what cursor has done right if you actually look at cursor in uh, Crunchbase have they raised money right seed round cursor no money so they haven't they have raised money they raised money in May 30th what the fuck that's really ancient is this the same company What? This is a 2018 c company? Cursor was acquired by Data Robot? What the fuck? Damn. Yeah, because sometimes what happens is if you, uh, people won't necessarily want to acquire your company if there's a bunch of VCs that are on the cap table, right? The cap table is basically who owns equity in this company. And if your cap table is just filled up with VCs, companies like Microsoft, they're, they're, they're not going to want to acquire you, right? They're, they're basically going to say, hey, we're just going to hire the engineers because that's the people that we really want. We don't need to pay you a bunch of money where all of that money is just going to end up going to some VC's pocket, right? We don't give a shit about the VC's. So... Yeah, it really depends. I don't know. Hope that answers some of the questions, but maybe not. All right, so now we've accepted this. It basically creates some goal positions here, uh, moves to those goal positions, and then prints the position. Okay. So uh, commit that as well. Multiple goal positions. Let's get pull. It's going there. It works. The servos are moving. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the is no status packet is just because the third so the third servo is not connected, so it keeps airing out on that third servo, but the other ones are working. So this is nice. I like this. Uh, okay, so let's go back here. 
And one thing that we can change here is these prints, right? I don't like the prints. I feel like we should use the logging much like we were using for the servo. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's control A, control K. We're gonna say uh, use logging uh, like the other, or logging instead of print as in uh, at servo.py or as in GPT. Let's give it that as an example. Uh, submit and edit. Let's see what it does. Let's see if it changes these prints to uh, servos or to logs. So now it's importing the logging module. This is just really slow. I, I hate how you have to basically wait. This almost feels like, so whenever you're developing Python, you forget about compiling. So like if you're writing C, for example, your workflow has to fundamentally wait. You basically, usually you have to compile things. So you'll write a bunch of code and then you have to make it and just sit there and wait for it to compile and go do something else. I think this is even more of a thing if you do like uh, cell phone development. That's something that I don't really do, but like people who write code for cell phones, they constantly have to sit there and wait for their shit to compile. But this has almost like a similar feeling where it feels like I want to do something and I just have to sit here and wait for it to do the thing. And then I come back and I can actually code. It'd be more interesting if I could like almost do multiple of these, you know, maybe some feedback for the cursor team here is like, allow me to, to kind of create multiple like almost like a queue, create a queue of changes that I want, and then it kind of goes through those changes one at a time. That would be kind of interesting. Okay, so we can see here that it changed these logs, uh, putting some errors here. It called it logging. I don't like that. It should have made it a log object. Yeah, so this is not correct. Oh. Follow up instructions, control K. Use a log object Oh my god. <laughs> This is just so long. <laughs> okay. All right. While that's doing, let's uh, come over here and uh, see what else we thought about doing. So, object for trajectories, functional design, prompts as functions, refactor the servo code, CV2 versus FFmpeg camera. Yeah, that's another thing we can look at. So while this is doing that, why don't we open up the uh, camera? So here the camera is uh, implemented as basically a uh, CV2, which is a Python library for computer vision. It uses that uh, CV2 video capture. But a different way to do this would be to just literally use FFmpeg. But let's see if we can get it to do something interesting here. So let's do plus and let's say, uh, what do you think of the at camera dot pi? Does is there is there any suggestions you would have as to the design pattern? Is a context manager the correct uh, design. So a context manager is this, which is basically means you can uh, you can create this object which only exists inside that context, but that's not necessarily the best way to have cameras. Use of a can context manager is a good design choice, great way to manage resources. So I mean, it's kind of like agreeing with the current design. I would have liked it to be more kind of adversarial, kind of like tell me why it's not a good idea. Sets up the blah, blah, blah. However, here are a few suggestions. Uh, NP function returns none if a frame capture fails. This might be a writer to raise an exception. 
Okay, I like that. Resource management. The delete cap is used to end the video capture. It would be easier to explicitly release with cap.release. Nice. Okay, I like that. Uh, add doc strings. Okay. Nice. Look at this. So now it, it basically changed to cap.release. Uh, now it raises a runtime error. It's using the log, which I like. Nice. All right. I actually like that. Let's copy and let's paste. Nice, look at that. Uh, bulk write, is this finish? I think it finished. We gotta click accept. Control enter to accept. Okay. It's accepting. Do you guys have any questions, by the way? I'm just kind of like zooming away here, getting more kind of sucked into the code, but I want to be able to ask, answer any questions. Like, what kind of stuff do you guys want to know about, about coding, about cursor? Do you guys want me to try something? Do you guys want me to talk more about kind of startup and the business strategy? Uh, maybe you guys have your own kind of ideas around startups you want to do. I, I have kind of gone through the whole startup process myself. I went through Y Combinator. I raised money. I was literally, uh, I've been in a bunch of these pitch meetings, so I kind of know uh, a bunch of stuff there. If you guys are interested, I can give you some intuition. What do you guys want? You guys want me to try to blow on this horn again? The fucking shofar horn? This thing is really hard. Look how tiny that, that hole is that you have to blow in. It's like a fucking pencil. Uh, can I merge two big data sets into a new... Uh, I think you meant CSV, not TSV. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Is that the Israeli term for shofar? Are you Israeli? Emily Schreiber? It kind of sounds like a German name. But I'm also ignorant, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, writing. Camera updates. Let's also rename this. Have a good new year. Okay. Is it new year time soon? Let's actually delete this. Move to trash. We're going to call bulk write. We're going to call it servo.py. We're going to call camera. Camera GPT is fine. Grad.io wiggle. Mm. This is Garbo. Ah, okay, so this horn is for New Year purposes. That's what you're saying. Uh, I'm surprised the chat interface doesn't have tool usage like file moving and manipulation implemented. Yeah, because, and, and Blom Poke, there's, it's, it's doubly interesting because you can actually do that, right? So like I could come here and I could take this uh, make file here and I could move it into the scripts, right? So the VS Code UI has some underlying function that allows me to basically, once I drag and move this with my mouse, it allows the underlying system to say, okay, you should move this file here. So it's not like they don't have access to the file system. It is there. You should be able to move things around because I'm literally doing it with my mouse cursor. Therefore that, that functionality exists. So like, why isn't that directly available via the, the, the chat bot? I don't know. I agree with you on that one. Bloom poke. Blom Poke? I, I'm sorry, I don't know what your name is. Okay. Uh, they have to combine it with Open Interpreter to also be able to run shell commands. 
or you could just uh, run the open interpreter is not that complicated guys like you can just clone this yourself like let's see interpreter this is literally just gonna CLI code block code interpreter interpreter.py let's see what's going on here thank you open interpreter is alive okay let's see what you're actually doing run code executes code this is the functional API so GPT has this function API which we actually tested out on a previous uh, stream and it was actually kind of a little bit trash so there's a interpreter object oriented design here as a model where is it actually running it though it's probably subsystem pros proc chat handle command switch.get action let's go to this action here action over here execute the function where is action action equals switch.get command holy shit they're like doing some patching here what is switch switch at some point this is going to call a sub process inquire respond I have some code for a falcon Update, respond, append, code interpreter. Let's see, start process. Here you go. Boom. That's it, guys. This is all you need, Blompoke, right here. Subprocess.popen. So all, all that code interpreter is doing is basically just this. See, it's piping in the uh, uh, logs so you can read that. actually makes a thread which is kind of interesting here's your uh, big try more try except if it breaks it just runs it again okay but yeah, I don't know I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is that you can rather than using open interpreter you just literally write that functionality yourself from scratch and then you don't have to depend on an external third party right that's always something you have to think about when you're writing software is you can use a third party library but if the third party library is actually not that complicated and it's not doing something too difficult you can just implement it yourself and then there's a trade-off between okay if I implement it myself I don't have this issue where maybe the development of that third-party library moves in a direction that I don't want or they introduce bugs or they introduce security vulnerabilities but the opposite flip side of that is you have to spend more time maintaining and writing that so yeah it's pretty much just copilot minus auto debugging. I, I think I tried copilot X. I think I legitimately had a stream on it. Let me see. Go to my tube. Code and chill. Paper bot. Audio craft. Somewhere. It might be this one. I don't know. I tried it out, but it was just clunky. It just kind of felt like this. Like sometimes I feel this one feels a little less clunky. I like it more now than I did at the beginning of the stream, but 
I don't know. I want to be able to talk to my IDE, you know, like imagine an IDE where it's just this, but I don't have to be clicking on things and like tab completing. I can just literally talk to it in speech, you know, like all that stuff is there. Like that technology exists right now. We just aren't doing it for some reason. Uh, let's come here. Let's say control K add documentation explaining these properties as in at servo.py fuck or here we'd up even better based on the dynamixel They have another preview feature called Copilot Voice. Oh shit, that actually exists? Holy crap. Damn, this is pretty badass. Oh shit, thanks Blompoke. I didn't know that that was there. Is this like official GitHub product or is this like GitHub Next? What the hell is GitHub Next? Team of researchers and engineers at GitHub exploring things beyond the adjacent. Copilot voice, nice. Code brushes? Is this is this you, Amelia? So you can like you can like <laughs> like hover over code. That's pretty cool. Damn, dude, we're already living in the future. Look at all this. Look at all these people. And this is kind of what I'm saying. It's like, do you think that these people here are better or worse off than the uh, people working at Cursor? You know, like how many, how many people are working at Cursor versus this team here? Which team do you think is going to get to the better version faster? Engineer, researcher, 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 engineer. There's a lot of devs too, which is good. Okay, let's see if it added the documentation. Goal position, present position. This is good, I like this, accept. Let's add four, three, two seconds of sleep to this. Sleep. Oh my God, we need to import time. Oh, actually. I wonder if I can auto debug this. Probably not. What is going on here? I got the invite for that, but I never ended up installing it. They like white lit waitlist the gated version of future products. Yeah, so it seems like they're not necessarily I can probably let me click on this. Copilot voice, sign up for the technical preview. Authorize waitlist. I accept. Give me your kidneys. Okay. 
I guess at some point they'll email me. <laughs> Don't save. Okay. The fuck is this? Discard. What's going on? What is going on? This is. I just wanted time dot sleep. That's all I wanted. I want import time. Time. Give me time. Import that time. Servers are moving. Nice. Okay. Uh, I don't know what else to do here, guys. I think we've tested out all the different features. So we tried all of these. We tried Command K, we tried chat, we tried the at symbols, we tried the code base answers, we tried the documentation, we tried the auto debug, and we also tried the fixed lints. So I think we tried it all. Um, so far, it's pretty good. You know, I kind of like it. It was a little bit, I think, marginally better than the current experience of uh, VS Code. But, you know, it's on par. It's using the same AI, so it's not like you're going to get better code suggestions with this than you would else uh, with uh, Copilot. I think the, the ability to kind of mention other previous parts of your code base is interesting. I think the most interesting feature that I th thought was the... Uh, the at documentation, so the fact that you can, uh, one thing we did is we added the Dynamixel SDK. All we had to do was basically hit this add new doc, and then we just copy pasted a link to a documentation page, which was this servo uh, library that we're using, and it was able to basically uh, do the bulk read and bulk write for us, which is quite impressive, you know? And it was able to, for example, add all the extra documentation for this. So. That was pretty cool. Like, I think that was kind of the coolest feature, this uh, doc feature here where you can basically ask it to look at other uh, docs. Auto debug was kind of mediocre, you know, because it could, it could tell you what the error was, but then you had to go and manually fix it. And the command K is a little slow, right? The fact that it basically, it has to rewrite everything before it gets there. But... I don't know. Overall, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. I don't know if I'll necessarily keep using it for much longer because kind of as Blompoke suggested, realistically, I don't see a world where the internal team at GitHub, which I guess now we know is this GitHub Next team, like they're 100% working on this, right? They're working on the next version of VS Code and GitHub and everything is super integrated and it's all AI enabled everywhere, so... I don't know if cursor is going to last much longer, but for the couple months until then, you know, feel free to use it. Maybe it's useful. Maybe it's not. Uh, I know that's it guys. I don't want to burn too much of your time. Hope that stream was a little bit interesting, a little bit useful. If not, you can uh, feel free to flame me in the comments. Uh, thank you. Camyar. Thank you. Blompoke. Thank you. Emily. Thank you. No free will. You June, Diego, Ed, PPP, John, everybody else, and see you guys later.